Hello, my name is Vasilina Frolova Cornero, and in this video, we will delve into the generation settings of the Stable Diffusion XL model. Many users handle SDXL similarly to how they did with version 1.5. In that version, when you alter the settings, you majorly influence the nuances of the image quality, but overall, it remains the same recognizable image. With SDXL, this is no longer the case. Currently on the screen, you can see two pictures made with the exact same prompt and even the same seed, yet with different settings. Moreover, there are no additional plugins like Adetali involved. Here are a few more examples for you. We'll discuss parameters such as sampling method, number of steps, CFG using refiner at different stages. I will generate a plethora of images with varying settings but the same prompt and seed to provide an easy point of reference. We'll kick off with the default settings that pop up when you turn on stable diffusion, but we'll change the resolution to 1024. Size is paramount when working with SDXL. There's a significant drop in output quality if you opt for a smaller dimension. Let me illustrate. Here's an image of 1024 with settings we'll discuss later. Now here's the same. Identical prompt, settings C but with a size variation. The degradation begins roughly at 768. If you're aiming for high quality images, neither dimension should drop below 800. Anything smaller will suffer a quality loss. Below 400, the image starts becoming muddled. Now let's walk through all available sampling methods and see how the generation behaves. I'll use a basic prompt, an old sad man near a lake. As you can see, despite having a consistent seed, the images vary quite significantly. Moreover, with the update of automatic 11.11 to version 1.6, numerous new sampling methods have been introduced, offering us a vast range of variations. I won't consider those methods as exemplary where hands are not visible, as it seems somewhat deceptive. This is because I tend to reject some of the works, specifically due to how the hands appear. For the best results, I chose the DPM++ 3M SDE method. It offers the highest realism, excellent detail, and color depth. Next, I tested various step counts ranging from 10 to 150. Here, we can observe that SDXL is primarily designed for high-quality images with a large number of steps. This is evident by the fact that up to 70 steps, there's extreme variability in the image A. Only after 70 does it become relatively stable. As a final choice, I settled on 90 steps, which is a golden mean between speed and quality. Next, I enabled the refiner model for SDXL. If you're not familiar with what this is, please refer to my tutorial on installing SDXL in Paperspace, where I discuss in detail all the intricacies of installation and usage. I specified various points of model integration, ranging from 10% image readiness to 90%. In stable diffusion, this is represented by refiner values from 0.1 to 0.9, respectively. As you can see, the image differs significantly when 90% of its rendering is managed by a different model. Gradually, as the refiner's intervention reduces, we transition to just enhancing the details of the existing image. I settled on integrating the refiner model at 80% image readiness. This way we obtain a well-detailed image without severe disruptions to its composition or anatomy. The last thing left for us to test is CFG. I'll start with a value of 1 and gradually increase it. Sometimes I'll check each subsequent value, especially in the range that's most commonly used, and other times I'll skip by increments of 5. As we can observe, high values introduce strong distortions. Among the lower values, I decided to stick with 7, which was our base value from the beginning. And now I'd like to demonstrate that these settings are suitable not just for our initial prompt, but for other creations spanning various styles. On the screen, I not only display the settings, but also the prompt. This way, if you're inclined, you can replicate the generation on your own. As you can see, these configurations grant us a stunning effect, irrespective of the style, be it realism, art, anime, or Chinese painting. With these settings, any artwork you create will look impeccable. By the way, all these prompts were sourced from my creations on Midjourney, and for the first time working with Stable Diffusion, I can genuinely contend that it parallels its primary competitor in quality. I hope this video was informative for you and I would greatly appreciate a thumbs up. If you are eager to learn more about the world of neural networks and even aspire to earn with their assistance, please subscribe to my channel and hit the bell icon to stay updated with new content. See you soon!